Julia Tofana was a widowmaker, in the literal sense, playing judge, jury, and executioner in an era where divorce was but a distant dream. With a higher body count than Vlad the Impaler, Tofana was one of the deadliest female criminals in history, and she provided her service to others for a price. Today, we're uncorking the story of Julia Tofana, the woman who poisoned 600 men with makeup. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, leave us a comment and let us know what other notorious criminals you would like to hear about. Okay, time to pick your poison. Throughout the Renaissance, poison was a powerful and popular tool for everything from political intrigue to clandestine divorces. And Belle Biv DeVoe wouldn't even form for 500 years. That weight is poison. The looming threat of poison and the temptation to use it began at the highest levels of Italian society. Take the case of Lucrezia Borgia. In the late 1400s, her family rose to power when her father, Rodrigo Borgia, became Pope Alexander VI from Rodrigo to Alexander. Talk about a downgrade. At least he got to be Pope. During her dad's whirlwind success, Lucrezia became associated with several different poisoning incidents. For starters, she was always worried about someone poisoning her second husband, Alfonso of Aragon, so she made his food herself. But that did not stop him from passing away under suspicious circumstances. The story goes that Alfonso's death was likely orchestrated by Lucrezia's brother, Cesare, who was apparently unhappy with their marriage. Maybe Alfonso wasn't pitching in for an NFL ticket. Following an attack from hired hands that left him bedridden but recovering, Alfonso began to cast doubt on Cesare. And in a measured but firm retaliation, Cesare had one of his lieutenants fatally strangle Alfonso. That's uh, not the best way to defuse an allegation. The Borgia family were already known for their political aspirations and paranoia. After Alfonso's death, the stories surrounding Lucrezia started flying. Rumor has it she had a special ring she used to discreetly poison enemies or unwanted suitors, a story that inspired the Marvel comic supervillain Sayana, who was based directly on Lucrezia. So presumably the Borgia Disney Plus series isn't too far off. But there isn't any real evidence that such a ring existed, and some historians believe it might just have been bad press intended to make her look bad. Still, it likely inspired others to try mass poisonings for real, including Julia Tofana. Although there isn't much known about her early life, historical accounts surrounding Julia Tofana say she spent a lot of time around apothecaries, learning all about different types of cosmetics. They didn't have targets back then, so you just couldn't loiter in the makeup section. Now, Renaissance Cosmetics may sound like a boutique makeup brand that Zendaya models, but it's safe to say that neither you nor the star of Euphoria would want to use them. Many cosmetics made around the time contained poisonous ingredients like arsenic, belladonna, and cochineal. Tofana's own line of cosmetics was the cosmopolitan-sounding Aqua Tofana, a colorless, odorless poison that could kill someone in as little as four drops. Tofana would sell her concoction to women who, for one reason or another, wanted to do away with their husbands. It took a few weeks, but it worked. The first dose could cause unexpected exhaustion and weakness. The second might bring out stomach aches or dysentery. And the third and fourth drops would take care of the rest. Those unsuspecting husbands never saw it coming. Until it was too late. Now a reasonable person might wonder why Tofana created such an undetectable poison intended to exclusively kill husbands. Tofana claimed she was only helping a woman get out of a marriage where the husband was abusive. Or maybe just kind of annoying. And demand for her poison was so great, she moved to Rome, hired her daughter to help her, and enjoyed tons of protection from her clients. All because of the lack of women's rights in Italy at the time. At the time, women could find themselves forced or outright sold into unhappy marriages. Husbands had total control over their wives, leaving women powerless and with little means to escape cruel treatment. And also, some of those husbands may have just snored too loud. If you're a longtime Weird History fan, you know that people tend to get whacked throughout history for pretty much any reason. Because of its undetectable nature, Aqua Tofana allowed the widows to widow themselves, free from suspicion, and Julia's business flourished. And the ironic thing is, it's believed she never actually poisoned anyone herself, although we're not sure that claim technically would hold up in court.
Disguising a deadly drink requires some finesse. So how did Tofana hide her poison? Because it lacked any taste, smell, or color, kind of like a LaCroix, Aqua Tofana could be mixed with anything. But hopefully, not LaCroix. Despite an unassuming name disguised as a normal skin-covering cosmetic, this prosaic label hid a wicked blend of arsenic, lead, and belladonna. And no, we're not talking about Stevie Nicks' best album. Belladonna is better known as a deadly nightshade. So stop dragging our heart around. But it was our friend Arsenic who played the starring role in Aqua Tofana. And Arsenic always delivers an unforgettable performance, leading to epic bouts of vomiting and diarrhea. Consequently, Arsenic was uniquely suited to poisoning because its effects blended well into a lineup of common illnesses. Plus, it was readily available to the general public. Anyone could simply waltz into an apothecary shop and pick up a vial or two. How convenient. It's no surprise that the enterprising Julia Tofana reached for arsenic while brewing her concoction. For any unsatisfied bride looking for a one-way ticket out of matrimony, just snag some aqua Tofana and pass it off as a vanity purchase. Then just add it to food, drink, or husband skin to jumpstart its lethal effects. This poison really kicks arsenic. Tofana sold her poisonous potion in two different forms. The first disguise was powdered makeup. Talk about a concealer. This ingenious method meant the poison could live incognito next to other makeup, lotions, and perfumes without raising suspicion. Though the members of KISS might have noticed something off, casual makeup wearers didn't stand a chance. Aqua Tofana was also sold as a cosmetic under the name Mana of St. Nicholas of Bari. With the image of a saint on the vial, Julia's poison looked like a devotional object, fooling unsuspecting husbands effectively. These disguises successfully fooled the authorities for nearly 50 years and helped create a cottage industry for Italian divorced by mysterious death in the late 1600s. Ciao, Bella. When it comes to a family business, poisonous cosmetics hardly seem like a popular choice. For starters, you probably don't get a lot of repeat business. But Tofana wasn't the only poisoner in her family. She was the daughter of Tofania de Damo, a woman who was executed in Palermo, Sicily in 1633 after being convicted of slaying her husband, allegedly with poison. We would say plot twist, but that's less of a twist and more of a straight line. The family connection didn't stop there. Tofana's daughter, Gerolo Maspera, aka Estrologo de la Dungara, later worked with her mother in the poisonous cosmetics trade. That's a heck of an alias. Sounds like a featured artist on a Skrillex remix. As for Tofana herself, when she first started her business, she was described from the jump as a beautiful young widow. Some believe she might have been responsible for the death of her own husband, which not only sounds possible but probable, and that she tested her new potion on her unwanted husband before her cosmetics business took off. But no one really knows for sure, especially her husband, because he was poisoned, um, allegedly. In the late 1650s, one of Tofana's clients had purchased a bottle of Aqua Tofana, taken it home, and put some in her husband's soup. Now that's an aggressive borscht. But the woman got cold feet. She stopped her husband from eating the soup, but in a way that only served to make him suspicious. We assume she came running in and slapped the bowl out of his hands. He forced her to tell the truth about her plan and the poison, then turned her over to Rome's papal authorities. The woman confessed and told the authorities about Tofana and her poison. Tofana was warned of her impending arrest and tried to seek sanctuary in a convent, but it wouldn't last. Following rumors that she'd resumed her business and may have even poisoned the water, which presumably made for an awkward Sunday, the convent turned her in. Julia Tofana later confessed to poisoning over 600 men between the years of 1633 and 1651, and it's possible the real number was even higher. In July 1659, Julia Tofana was executed, along with her daughter and three employees. After Tofana's confession and sentencing, a number of her clients tried to feign ignorance and claimed their aqua Tofana was simply for cosmetic purposes. Others were thrown into prison or met the same fate as Tofana. But the legend of Aqua Tofana continued long after Julia's death. So think twice the next time you want to apply some concealer you've never tried before.
Long after Julia Tofana's death, Aqua Tofana's legacy was still in full force. In 1791, iconic composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart claimed he was being poisoned by Julia Tofana's invention. At the time, he was still working on his Requiem Mass. When he fell seriously ill, which was ironic given the subject of a Requiem, he was certain he'd been poisoned. From his deathbed, Mozart declared, I feel definitely that I will not last much longer. I am sure that I have been poisoned. Someone has given me Aqua Tofana and calculated the precise time of my death. Sounds like someone was upset about his marriage of Figaro. The rumor goes that a contemporary and competing composer, the admired but less successful Antonio Salieri, was to blame. The story was expanded and exacerbated in Alexander Pushkin's 1831 play Mozart and Salieri, which was adapted into an 1898 opera by famed Russian composer Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov, and in the 20th century, Peter Schaeffer's 1979 play Amadeus. Adapted into an iconic 1984 film, claimed Salieri's jealousy led him to orchestrate Mozart's death. Ultimately, Mozart's symptoms tended not to indicate poison as the culprit, but the fact that Julia Tofana's recipe was still being discussed over 100 years after she passed just demonstrates how potent it was. Maybe Salieri should have thought about inventing a poison. So what do you think? Was Julia Tofana an irredeemable criminal or a misguided vigilante? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.